spirulina is the most incredible edible thing I know. It's a cyanobacteria. It grows really quickly with few resources. And most importantly, it's extremely nutritious. It's full of proteins, vitamins and iron. And delicious. We've been in New York City to meet We Are The New Farmers Spirulina Farm. At Low Tech Lab, we travel the world to find the best low tech. Inventions that are useful, sustainable and accessible to all. What is the story of the new farmers? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are called we are the new farmers because we believe we need to rethink the way we grow food. Uh, our agricultural system is contributing uh, at least 30% of all uh, man-made carbon emissions and climate change is something that we deeply care about here. So when we started looking into our food system, we were trying to find ways to grow food that has a lower carbon footprint, but also a higher nutritional value. And spirulina just perfectly fits this equation. We just learned that the products that were on the market weren't just a good fit for people and people didn't really like them. So we wanted to come up with a way that people want to eat algae and people like to incorporate into their diets. Spirulina is a microalgae, which means it is similar to the more popular seaweeds like kelp and nori, uh, but much smaller, um, actually microscopic. But it is packed with nutrients and vitamins, uh, with a variety of minerals, with uh, plant-based protein, and thus it makes it a very, very delicious and very healthy food for humans. We know that uh, spirulina has been a food source for centuries in, in many places around the world. Um, we know that, for example, the Kanembo people in, in Africa, around Lake Chad, uh, are harvesting spirulina for at least three or four hundred years. On the other side of the, the world, um, the Aztecs used to uh, use spirulina on a regular basis. We're giving that to their couriers that would um, run from their capital, Tenochtitlan, to uh, any of their outposts and um, would use little cakes made out of beans and spirulina and, and spices um, as the, the food to go. We try to replicate these kind of temperatures here indoors, this kind of environment where it's really warm, as you can feel here in the farm, um, and um, also um, providing them with the nutrients that they need and that they would find in a natural environment, which is, most importantly, in a very high pH. Do you think that the spirulina farming is uh, good in the city? Yeah, one of the things that is amazing about the way we grow is that you can literally replicate it wherever you want. We can grow this way in, in Canada, we can grow this way in Alaska if we want to. Um, doesn't mean that we need to grow this way in every place in the world. Where you have plenty of warm temperatures and plenty of sunlight, you can use different ways of growing. But if you want to grow in a place like New York, where you have long winters, then you need to go inside. And um, Another big advantage of growing it this way is that you have 100% control over your product and you have a very pure and high quality product that you typically cannot achieve if you grow outside in an open pond where your pond is um, directly affected by, by the environment, by rain, by insects and leaves that could potentially fall into those tanks. So we see it in, in two ways, I think. We have this facility here which brings out a much higher quality product closer to where people live so we have a fresh product and we can grow year-round uh, independent of what's going on outside. We have a fresh product, a fresh paste, which can be used in sauces and dressings, they can be used in pestos, some just uh, have a tablespoon by itself, some mix it into yogurt bowls or overnight oats. Um, and then we have a fresh frozen spirulina, which is a tiny pre-portioned cube which we freeze right after harvest. And that's just perfect for your morning smoothie. So you pop a little cube into your blender and it makes every smoothie healthy and, and green. And uh, what has been the big challenges? Uh, it's the same with spirulina as with any food. It's rather simple to grow. Like otherwise we would be extinct by now if it wouldn't be simple to grow. But it gets a lot more difficult once you actually want to do it commercially and once you go to a larger scale. I think there's a tremendous benefit of growing your own food, whether it is spirulina or any kind of crop, because you are part of the process, you know where it's coming from, you have 100% control over uh, the, the inputs that go into it and you get attached to it, whether it is um, vegetables that you grow or algae. 
I'll show you how to grow spirulina. But first, you need to understand a few things about it. Spirulina is a cyanobacterium that grows in salty and alkaline water. Through a microscope, we discover that they are tiny spring-like organisms. They turn on themselves to catch the sun and photosynthesis. They need CO2 from the air, as well as nitrogen, phosphorus and iron to grow. For a small culture like this, you will need a transparent tank that is easy to clean, a strain of spirulina, a small air pump, a filter of about 40 microns, a shade net, some culture solution, which is a mixture of water, baking soda and salt, iron juice, which is a mixture of vinegar, rusty nails and lemon, left 10 days and then filtered. ta -da! For the nitrogen source, I use urine, but those who don't like the idea can use compost juice or buy fertilizers. It's optimal at 37 degrees. The culture must be placed in the sun with a removable shed net. This net will be adjusted according to the health of the culture and the sunshine. The air pump steers the culture 5 minutes per hour so that all the spirulina is well exposed to the sun. Every morning, if it's healthy, you have the choice between three options. Harvest, increase the volume of the culture or let it rest. Every morning you can harvest up to a quarter of its volume. Let it drain. Measure the amount harvested. Then you have to fill it. For 1 ml of spirulina collected, you have to give it 2 ml of urine and 0.1 ml of iron juice. And then put it back in. When it's healthy, Every morning you can add up to a quarter of its volume. All you have to do is add some culture solution to it with a little food. For each liter added, you have to put 10 milliliters of urine and 2 milliliters of iron juice. So you can start your culture with 1 liter and after only a few weeks, you can have hundreds of liters. Take care of your culture. Clean the edges or remove any lumps and add some water to compensate evaporation. It is also necessary to get to know it. For example, this small tool allows you to know the density. The white disc should disappear when it is immersed at a depth of 2 or 3 cm. The density, but also the color, smell, temperature, consistency or pH will give you clues about its health. If a parameter is not good, action must be taken, either by changing the shade, the food or the steering. Spirulina is magic. Its culture has spread rapidly since a few years. It represents excellent opportunities to create local business in both rich and poor countries. The goal of the Lotech Lab is to find Lotech innovation, document and promote them so that anyone can replicate them. It's open source and collaborative, so feel free to comment. And if you start your own culture, share it with us. <laughs>